But what I want to show you is some work that Maxwell himself did in figuring out these equipotentials. And so I have here a transparency of publication by Maxwell. You see a charge, let's assume it is plus 4 and plus 1. It could be minus 4 and minus 1, but let's assume they are plus. And you see the green lines, which we've seen before, which are the field lines. Don't pay any attention to the green field lines now. The red lines are equipotentials, and you have to rotate them about the vertical because they are, of course, surfaces. This is three-dimensional. I have not drawn all the equipotential surfaces in red because they become too cluttered here, but I've tried to put most of them in red. Since this charge is positive and that charge is positive, everywhere in space, no matter where you are, the potential has to be positive. There is not a single point where it could be negative. If you are very far away from the plus 4 and the plus 1, then you expect that the equipotential surfaces are spheres because it's almost as if you were looking at a plus 5 charge. So it doesn't surprise you that when you go far out that you ultimately get spherical shapes. When you're very close to the plus 4, they are perfect spheres. When you're very close to the plus 1, they are perfect spheres. But then when you're sort of in between, neither close to the plus 4 nor to the plus 1, they have this very funny shape. It reminds me the shape of this balloon a little bit, sort of like this. You see? And there is one surface which is most unusual, equipotential surface, which here has a point where the electric field is zero. It's sort of like twisting the neck of a goose. You get something like this. And so you have here a surface which has a point here, and it is exactly at that point where the electric field is zero. That does not mean that the potential is zero. Of course not. The potential is positive here. If you come with a positive charge from the lobby seven and you have to march up to that point, you have to do positive work. You have to overcome both the repelling force from the plus four and the repelling force from the plus one. But finally, when you reach that point, you can rest because there is no force on you at that point. That's what it means that the electric field is zero. It does not mean that you haven't done any work. So never confuse electric fields with potentials. I want to draw your attention to the fact that the green lines, the field lines, are everywhere perpendicular to the equipotentials. I will get back to that during my next lecture. That is not an accident. That is always the case. Now, Maxwell shows you something that is a little bit more complicated. Here, he calculated for us the equipotential surfaces. The red ones are the surfaces. Again, you have to rotate them about the vertical to make it three-dimensional. And now we have a minus one charge and a plus four. And so whenever it is red, the surface, the potential is positive. And whenever I have drawn it blue, the potential is negative. First, if we were very far away from both the plus 4 and the minus 1, you expect to be looking at a charge which is effectively plus 3. And so if you go very far away, for sure, the potential is everywhere positive, and you expect them to be spherical again. If you look here, you're very far away from the plus 4 and the minus 1. Indeed, this has already the shape of a sphere. So that's clear, that the plus 4 and the minus 1 far away behave like a plus 3. If you're very close to the plus 4, you get nice spheres around the plus 4, positive potential. If you're very close to the minus 1, notice that the blue surfaces are almost nice spheres, but now they're all negative, because you're very close to the minus 1. So a negative potential. There is here one surface, which now has zero potential. It has to be, because if you're negative potential close to the minus one, and you have positive potential very far out, you've got to go through a surface where it's zero. And so there is here a surface, I still have put it in blue, which is actually everywhere on this surface, 
the potential is zero. Is the electric field zero there? Absolutely not. Electric field should not be confused with potential. What it means is that if you take a test charge in your pocket and you come from infinity and you walk to that surface, that by the time you have reached that surface, you've done zero work. That's what it means. That's the potential is zero. There is here one point, which we discussed earlier in my lectures, where the electric field is zero. The potential is not zero there. The potential is definitely positive here. Because here was the zero surface. Here is already positive surface. And this is a positive surface. So the potential is positive. However, if you reach that point, there's no force on your charge. So that means electric field is zero. It is not so easy, of course, to calculate these surfaces. Maxwell was capable of doing that 110 years ago. And nowadays, we can do that very easily with computers. Equipotential surfaces, which have different values, can never intersect. Plus 5 volt surface can never intersect with a plus 3 or a minus 1. And you think about why that is. Why that is. It would be a total violation of the conservation of energy. So equipotential surfaces, different values, can never intersect. All right. So you've seen that for the various charge configurations, the equipotential surfaces have very complicated shapes and cannot always be calculated in a very easy way. Now comes the question, why do we introduce electric potentials? Who needs them? And who needs equipotential surfaces? Isn't it true that if we know the electric field vectors everywhere in space, that that determines uniquely how charges will move, what acceleration they will obtain? That means how their kinetic energy will change. And the answer is, yeah. If you know the electric field everywhere in space, sure. Then you can predict everything that happens with a charge in that field. But there are examples where the electric fields are so incredibly complicated that it is easier to work with equipotentials. Because the change in kinetic energy, as I will discuss now, really depends only on the change in the potential when you go from one point to another. So you will see very shortly that sometimes, if you're only interested in change of kinetic energy and not necessarily interested in the details of the trajectory, then equipotentials come in very handy. Never confuse U, which is electrostatic potential energy, with V, which is electric potential. This has unit joules, and this has unit joules per coulomb, which we call volts. If I have a collection of charges, pluses and minuses, U has only one value. It is the work that I have to do to put all these crazy charges exactly where they are. But the electric potential is different here, from there, from there, to there, to there, to there. If you're very close to a plus charge, you can be sure that the potential is positive. If you're very close to a, a negative charge, you can be sure that the potential is negative. But U has only one number, only one value. They're both scalars. Don't confuse one with the other. In a gravitational field, matter, like a piece of chalk, wants to go from high potential to low potential. If I just release it with zero speed, there it goes. High potential to low potential. In analogy, positive charges will also go from a high electric potential to a low electric potential. And of course, this is unique for electricity. Negative charges will go from a low potential to a high electric potential. Suppose I had a position A in space, and I had another position B, and I specify the potentials. 